Hello, beautiful people of the interwebs. Wayne Hackman here, aka Waxstar, and in this video, we're going to talk about 3D printing. Now, for those of you who have known me, I like anything technologically related. And I have for a number of years wanted to get myself into the 3D printing game. But I have to be honest with you, early 3D printers were expensive and you needed some technical know-how on how to use them. And I always said to myself, well, as much as I'd like to drop three, four, five hundred dollars on a decent 3D printer, I'm going to wait until something comes out that I'm able to use fairly easily without dropping or breaking the bank. And so this is what I ended up finding. This is the Easy 3 Mini 3D printer. And it's basically billed as a child's toy. However, from looking online, this isn't a bad entry level printer. And so I went on to AliExpress, you know what happens after a couple of beers at night and you justify this in your mind. And I dropped about a hundred dollars on this. Now shipping into Kenya has always been excellent with AliExpress, but the Kenyan government did somehow get wind of the fact that this was a printer and charged me a whole load of tax upon this as well. But I suspect that that's not going to be the same experience for everyone else around them. So I'm going to unbox this and then I'm also going to talk about this, a Raspberry Pi. I wanted to put a particular operating system on this Raspberry Pi so that we could use it to manage all the 3D prints that hopefully I will be able to do. So let's get into this. Let's have a little look at what's inside. So this is the Easy 3 Mini 3D printer. Okay, it's the model K7 and you've got websites on here as well. Now, I didn't specify the color. I wanted black, but I when I opened this up earlier, I got orange. But let's have a little look inside what we get. Well, you get a pretty comprehensive destructions book that is in multiple languages, which is good. You get a quick read. You know, you must do this before you put this computer in um, this printer into operation. You get a USB A to USB B connector uh, that will go into the side of the printer. And actually, I'm planning to then plug this into the Raspberry Pi, which will then manage the print. You do get some 3D printing element, but for all of those people who have reviewed this online, they've said that this printing element isn't particularly good. This, from what I understand, makes a little kind of bracket uh, that you can put PLA on, which threads into the printer. You also get a screwdriver. I suspect all of the screws or the bolts that you need. And then also you get a little USB-C to micro SD card reader in there as well, which I believe has got lots of instructions on as well as some 3D prints as well. So let's have a look at this as well. As well. Now, one of the things I liked about this is that actually it was packaged reasonably small. So this is the printer, bright orange. Now, this is the bed here that it prints on. And you can see that it comes with this magnetic uh, plate that you can peel off, which I imagine has all your creations on here. You've also got a power adapter and um, it comes into two pieces that you can clip together. And so these are the two pieces. I'm just going to pull this out. They're obviously wired together. So give me a second to pull this out and we can talk about this a little bit more in more detail. 
I have, having been told about the fact that the 3D printing element isn't particularly, or filament rather, isn't particularly good that comes with the machine. So the, it, it only melts or extrudes in PLA. And so I found someone in Kenya that has sold me some smart fill, which apparently is really, really good. And so I've bought gray here. I figured that's a pretty generic color which I'm going to use right off the bat so that we know that we're getting the best material into this printer. So let's have a look at the printer. So these are the two bits that, that come together. And um, if you have a look carefully, what you've got is it looks like that mounts onto there like so. This is the extruder head there. So it mounts. I'm not going to screw anything because I want to read the instructions first. So that goes on there. You can have a look at the 3D printer. So that looks a little bit like this. Now, the bed itself is 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters, and I'm told that it will print up to 100 centimeters. So in theory, you can print anything that's within a 100 centimeter cube. So I'm going to fiddle with this now over the next hour or so, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to have a look at this in a little bit more detail to see if we can get our first print out of the box it was time to put it all together and it was a pretty simple affair it was four screws that took this extruder head and arm and attached it to the main body and a couple of clips where there are two wiring looms that need to be attached very very simple the printer is simple it has an sd card slot it has a switch that that enables you to extrude or to uh, retract the the element as you're putting it in there's a home button there is a USB socket as well as that um, barrel socket for the 12 volt power. Now at this part of the setup I felt quite uncomfortable uh, and to tell you why that when you set up a 3D printer apparently it's important to level the bed so that the extruder head evenly puts that PLA out onto the bed and so the only way that you I found that you could do this was by manhandling the extruder head, which felt very uncomfortable. I didn't want to break it. And then using a small piece of paper, you needed to adjust the bed with the kind of screws that you can see at either corner and just enable there to be about a paper thickness between the bed and the extruding nozzle and I did this and it felt very uncomfortable I didn't like doing this and actually when I put the operating system on the Raspberry Pi which I'll talk about a little bit later it enabled me to actually digitally move the head and so I didn't have to unplug everything fiddle with everything until it was all right and and it made the leveling process a lot easier once I got it set up I, I plugged it all in and I went to put the SD card into the side of the machine ready for that first print. Now the SD card came with manual software for both Mac and PC as well as a few print but if you're just using this as a standalone printer what you need to do is you just need to leave the one bit of g-code for the one item that you want to print on the SD card and nothing else on there and once you've set it up it's just simply the case of well enabling the printer to to zero its head in and you can see that I pressed the home button and then one other button that you may have noticed is that green flashing button there that is the play button and by simply pressing that whatever G code that you have in your SD card it will read it and start to print it but before any printing takes place you need to put the PLA into the little hole at the top of the extruder and, and basically it's very simple you flick that switch to feed at the bottom um, and um, you hit the play button and what happens is it heats the head up to I think about 180 degrees Celsius and then it starts to extrude plastic as you can see it doing here and so you know now that the plastic is coming through uh, uh, nice and evenly ready for your print so PLA threaded uh, the SD card mounted and now all it means is for me to press 
Play. Now, actually, on the SD card, you get a couple of prints, which apparently are prints that a lot of people use to test the capability of a 3D printer. As soon as I saw one that there was a rocket, I then, well, decided to print that. Okay, so this is what I did. I put together the machine. I made a really rudimentary PLA holder, uh, leveled the bed, and then put the SD card into the device and uh, just had one, uh, used one of the preset codes. And one of those preset uh, G codes was a rocket. Now I'm using Octoprint and I'll talk about Octoprint in the middle at the moment. And you can see there my, uh, <laughs> uh, a very cheap web camera of the bed there. And you can see my, my rocket has been complete. Let me just take it off the bed quick. There's the model. I, I just removed the the plastic base that it created, and I was a bit worried because it was lifting here. Uh, but I just sort of very carefully snapped that off. And my goodness, it, this is all right. I'm actually really, really quite impressed with this. Uh, uh, like I say, I've never 3D printed before, uh, and you know, it it feels solid. It's it looks okay. Uh, this is my first ever 3d printed element here and there you go uh, one 3d printed rocket so let's take a moment and look at some of the software that you can use with this this particular printer now you're able to use a piece of software that's bundled with this printer called easy 3d and and it's called easy wear and the idea of this is that you can take any stl files that perhaps you've downloaded from I don't know, places like Thingiverse or online, and it will import it into this software. And then you use this software to kind of create what they call G code that enables you to set it up so your printer knows what to do. So, what I've done here is I've created. Uh, imported something called Benchy, which is a boat, which basically gives an idea of what your printer is capable of. And it imports it onto this sort of virtual bed. So you get a rough idea of how the boat will appear on the bed of your printer. Now you're able then to convert this structure into something called G code, which is basically it will layer each section of the boat um, and enable your printer to know where to put its head and how much PLA it will extrude. It also kind of adds a few other bits and pieces as well, you know, supporting structures just to enable that the thing isn't going to collapse. Now with this particular software, you have three options of creating G code, a fast option, which I assume is using less PLA, but perhaps compromises the integrity of the structure. Standard, I guess, uses the full amount of PLA and I'm guessing optimizes somewhere in between. Like I said, I'm going to experiment this. Once you've created your G code, what you then do is you then can save it onto your SD card and put it into the printer and press play. Or in my case, I'm going to use something called Octoprint, which I've put onto a Raspberry Pi, which will enable me then to control the Raspberry Pi through a web administration page on my local network. And here it is. It's called Octoprint. Octoprint is the software that you put onto the operating system called Octopi. And you are able quite easily by connecting the Raspberry Pi using USB-C into the rest of your network via an Ethernet port, you're able then to control the printer. And it gives this really interesting option where you're able to see the bed. I've got this sort of cheap flatbed printer. I've loaded the wrong G code here, but you can also see what the G code looks like. Now you can see I'm bringing up the test boat here. Um, so the same G code that that piece of software has created is now installed into Octoprint and quite easily by then pressing play or print, the Octoprint will instruct the printer on what to do. Now I stumbled across a little bit of an error here because obviously the G code has put something into 
the printer saying we needed a heated bed. This doesn't have a heated bed. It, it, it confused me for a while. And then I just realized if I just press play, it overrides that heated bed command to get it going. And then after a moment, after the temperature is lifted of the head, you see the device spring into action and something is printed. Now, there's a really great other feature that you can use in Octoprint. Not only can you, you view the web camera through, a, I've got a little application, which I'll show you in a moment, on my phone and I can look at it anywhere in the house. You can also take a time-lapse video of the creation being made. And this is an example of one of those time-lapse videos, uh, which you will see in a moment. So there you have it, the Easy 3 printer. I've been using it now for about 24 hours and I've really enjoyed it. I've, I've had a lot of failures, but you know, my first print went incredibly well. I did two of these and then I tried to get a bit creative, realized that I needed to readjust the bed, but I've had a couple of prints earlier today, it printed out that boat that you saw. And I, I was quite impressed for a, what? is perceived as a low budget printer. Now, would I upgrade? Maybe, if I've got the need to do so. But for me, I just want to create a few very simple little items. At the moment, the printer is uh, printing away a replacement um, knob for my coffee machine, and it seems to be doing it okay. I've, I've experimented with the software that is provided with the machine, also coupled with Octoprint, I would highly recommend you get a Raspberry Pi. I'm just using a Model 2 or a Model B, and it seems to be handling everything well. It's made some really nice, quick um, time-lapse images with a couple of old web cameras that don't even work on any of the newer computers and it's working absolutely fine. So for a hundred dollar punt, that's obviously not including taxes and shipping, I didn't think that was too bad, coupled with some good quality PLA filament. And I think you've got yourself a very easy, huh, notice the pun, a very easy 3D, 3D printer that you can enjoy to get to learn how to use 3D printing. I'm going to now experiment with even making my own designs and see if I can upload them. Remember the bed is only 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters. Uh, the, the bed isn't heated, and so it does throw up this little error code in Octoprint. But if you hit play, it seems to continue over that. And, and what's also amazing about Octoprint is, I don't know if I can show this, show this to you right now, is they, there you go. There's an app that connects to my Raspberry Pi on my home network, which enables me to even view what the printer is doing if I'm in the other room. Uh, last night, I just went to bed and, and I thought something wasn't quite right. I had a little look on the live video footage being transmitted via the Raspberry Pi to my phone, and I saw that something had gone wrong. I got out of bed, reset it, and then came back this morning to find a much better print. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Please do all of the things that YouTubers do, rate and subscribe, and I look forward to bringing to you more content in the not too distant future. Thanks for watching.